and we're going to show you a quick and easy way to mark out the plate. So Pretty basically how to measure and cut out a hex shape in a piece of plate that will actually fit over here to undo this nut. So we've got our breakout bench here. So a few more cylinders have come in this week. These are a little easier in some ways because the gland nuts are actually bolted onto the barrel. Um, this long thing here is part of a sensor so obviously this cylinder has some sort of stroke indication so telling the um, telling a computer or something like that what position the actual cylinder and piston are in. We've got a big hex nut we've got to make a we've got to cut a plate with actually a hex hole and we're going to show you a quick and easy way to mark out the plate. So Pretty basically how to measure and cut out a hex shape in a piece of plate that'll actually fit over here to undo this nut. So first thing to do is measure the across the flats, the dimension across the flats. This one is 80, so 79 to 80. You want to give at least a mil so you don't have to die grind your cut out. And then you actually measure across the the diagonal. All right, so what have we got there? 89 to probably 90. We'll say 90 because it's 89. Yep, 90. 90, 90 millimeters. 90 millimeters. So those two dimensions are all you need to mark out the hex so that we can bolt the plate into there so we can break out the nuts. Those nuts are done up extremely tight. So we'll go over to the welding bay and mark out the plate. We've also got another larger hex nut here. Big nut holding it, holding the piston on. This one's approximately 100 millimeters in diameter and across the diagonal is 115 millimeters. So we'll, again, we'll show you what we did. So we've got a plate here and this one we've already marked out. This is for the 100 millimeter hex nut and we'll show you how on this plate here how we're going to mark out the hex for the 80 millimeter nut or the 79 millimeter nut. So the first thing we need to do is actually draw a circle the diameter of the Diagonal on the 80 millimeter hex nut. So, what was the diagonal? Diagonal Seth? is 90 millimeters. Exactly, 90? Yes. Alright. So, just get your compass. Are you sure it's exactly 90? Yes. Yes? Because yep. the other one was. So the first thing you do is, if it was 90 millimeters, put your rule. All right. We need to go half of 90 set. All right. Yeah. Yeah, but I want to measure it on the three, and then I can use the ends. Just do it here. Quick. Just do it. Just do it on here. All right. So half of 90 is 45. Start at the 100, mate. It's much easier. So go to 145. You want super accuracy here. Okay, so then draw your 90 millimeter circle. See that? Okay, next. Make sure draw a diagonal first, a nice clear diagonal with a line through the middle of the hole. Okay. So now using the same 45 
millimeter compass. Just go to. The Sure, I just yeah. pop some centers. What's up? Let's upgrade this video and pop some centers on the corner. We haven't got a punch yet. We haven't got a punch. So, check the diameter that you've just scribed. Start at the 100 and you're measuring where it finishes. 90. 90 what? Millimeters. 90 exactly or 90 and, and a bit? No, it's 90 point, looks like a 90.5. Good. All right. So, double check that this is still at 45.3. Yes? Yep. Sure, has it moved in? Positive. So, you're going to put your little center pops there again? Yep. So center pop those there. Make sure your center pop is exactly vertical, so it doesn't go flying when you hit it with a hammer. All right, so, to, to make an accurate hex, we'd need to draw an arc from there to there. You don't really need to draw an arc, so that's just a careful set. All right. Okay, other side. It's the intersection with the circle, that's important. The rest is not that important. All right. So, what we're going to do now is actually join those distances from there to there from there to there from there to there and that should give us a perfect X hopefully with a diameter of across the flat sorry dimension of 80 millimeters Supposedly a perfect six-sided hexagon. He's just going to get the verniers now or a tape measure and prove that he's made it 80 millimeters. The point, the moment of truth, Seth. <laughs> Last time we did this, we didn't get 80 millimeters, did we? Aha! Uh -huh. It's close. <laughs> it's pretty close. It's what 79 or something? Yeah, better than the last time. But well, <laughs> actually, what did we measure across the flats? Let's just go and double check. I'm pretty sure it's what we need. We're measuring across the Seven, flat. 79. 78 point. 79. 78, 79. Okay, so theory works very well. Awesome. So we've got a double There's gonna be a breakout lot. plate here. So we've got an 8, 79 millimeter hex marked out here. We've got two options, but to maintain accuracy, we're actually going to do it a long way by actually using very thin cutting discs. It's not going to be super pretty, but it should be much more accurate than actually cutting with the um, with the oxyacetylene. Oxyacetylene, I don't think we can get the accuracy we require. And just flip that over. That's our first successful one we did, and we actually got it really well. And that's what we need. We need a hex with a 100 millimeter across the flat. So the plate 
is mounted into the breakout bench. The right end of the cylinder is mounted in the rotator. The nut end is put through there. As this rotates, the nut is held in there and it comes undone. That's the other size, that's the 79 millimeter. This is the 100 millimeter cut out for the nut. 